So welcome to Finance Automation Beyond Technology, very first of our webinars this year. We are going to be looking at it a little bit differently today, as I'm sure you saw in the invites that you received uh, and in the follow-up emails that you've received, etc. We're not going to be uh, particularly focusing on uh, any technological element today. What we're trying to do is uh, look at this from a slightly different viewpoint and actually the people that are around an organisation and uh, why technology can be so important and, and influential for them. As you know, I've introduced myself, John Stovold. I'm the UK Marketing Manager. I'll be leading it today. I've been with ITSoft now for about uh, six years, give or take. Uh, I've started from a, a sales side of the business, moved across into the marketing side, and I'm joined by my colleague Rory, who hopefully will be able to say hello and jump into the webcam. Yes, hey guys, uh, <clears throat> Rory here, uh, as John alluded. Uh, I've been working at ITSoft for just over two years now, started in inside sales, much like John. Uh, now managing marketing projects underneath him. So yeah, I will be asking you guys a few questions later on. Uh, so please stay attentive. Please uh, get your fingers at the ready for clicking on those answers. Thank you very much, Rory. So for those of you that were here earlier, you would have seen this screen already. And I hope uh, a number of you would have seen this across the social media channels in the build up to this particular webinar. This is a quotation from the uh, recruitment company Manpower, and Manpower have uh, obviously gone through their, their recruitment processes and they've got a good understanding from what's happening out there in the market. And they say that by 2020, millennials or the generation that's known as millennials will be making up more than a third of global workforces. What's very interesting about this, though, is that that will also bring around a very significant shift in what a lot of organizations see at the moment. And that is that the baby boomers generation will have decreased and will only be uh, the equivalent of about 6% of global workforces by the same time. For many organizations, this is going to be a very, very significant shift in the demographic of their employees and in the way in which their organization is structured and will work. I'm sure you're asking yourselves, what has this got to do with accounts payable, uh, accounts payable finance departments, or, or even to do with automation? Well, before we answer that, we would like to uh, fire over to the very first of the poll questions. So I hope you're all uh, ready for this, looking at the screens. Rory, over to you. Thanks, John. Uh, yep, so first poll question, guys. I'm going to be launching it now, so get your mouses at the ready. Uh, the question we're asking is, uh, just as a first impression, which demographic represents the majority in your AP team? Could it be mainly baby boomers, mainly Generation X, mainly millennials, or mainly Generation Z? So the poll's open, so if you could just click on whichever one you feel. It's not, it doesn't have to be uh, factually correct 100%, but whatever you guys feel. Just give another couple of seconds just so everybody has a chance. Okay, so I'm going to close the poll now. I'm just going to share the results with everybody. So we've got mainly Generation X in today uh, as the representative, and then mostly baby boom, and then lastly a few millennials, but no mainly Generation X, which is interesting. Back to you, John. Rory, thank you very much, and hopefully we will have the presentation coming back through. Uh, so that's fantastic, guys, and that's, uh, that really does highlight the importance of why we wanted to run this webinar, this shift in uh, demographic and, and, and organizational structure that's happening now, that by 2020 will have uh, been a, a very significant shift for a lot of businesses. And actually, with uh, the focus being on Generation X and baby boomers currently in your organizations, preparing for the next generations coming through, being millennials and Generation Z, becomes uh, quite an important element for you as business leaders uh, and, and as finance department leaders. The real reason behind this and why this is such a shift and why it's probably more of a shift than we've found with the, uh, the influx from baby boomers to, to Gen X 
is the millennials are the arguably the very first generation of people coming into business that we could describe as truly digitally native. What I mean by that when I say that is these are people who probably don't remember dial up internet. They probably had computers at school all the way through that. They had smartphones very early on in their lives. And now a lot of you, uh, I imagine like myself, uh, do remember dial up internet. We do remember uh, mobile phones by Nokia that did nothing other than make a phone call and probably just about send a text message. And even then it was only a couple of lines of characters on the screen. So when we are in the workplace and we're looking at technology, we are far more uh, relaxed about the kind of technology that's in the workplace and how much impact that has on our lives. Now, we all still get frustrated with slow internet speeds or, or laggy uh, computer systems. But for millennials, that's a very different focus. And for them, they are used to having a connectivity that is always up and it's always fast or virtually always. They're used to having platforms and solutions that they can use anywhere at any time and be able to engage and communicate effectively using those. And for a lot of organizations, if they actually look at the platforms they have in place, they don't really offer that kind of level of engagement and deliver that much business and personal benefit to the users. With this change in demographic that's anticipated to happen in the coming year or so, the use of automation tools in back office functions like accounts payable and finance can become a very, very effective recruitment tool. In fact, a number of recruiters that are out there are saying to organizations, large enterprises, you need to be considering what are the systems and services that you have in your back office function if you want to be able to not simply recruit the best of the next generations that are coming through, but to keep them as well. For most organizations that already have millennials in place, the reality is that at least half of those employees, despite the fact that they may have only been in the business for 12 months, will already be looking for their next role, their next challenge and their next task, because they're looking for something very different from their, their job than probably the generations before, Generation X and baby, baby Boomers were looking for. They're looking for fulfillment they're looking for a real-term impact on their organization, on their day-to-day -day life, and on the wider community as well. Uh, things, you know, the impact outside of their immediate organization becomes so much more important to them. And that's why automation as a tool is very, very effective in that recruitment process. And at the uh, point where you're looking to keep the very best of this talent that you've managed to get into your organization. Now, if we think that the millennial generation are going to be stepping this up quite significantly for us, we've only got to look forward another five to 10 years to Generation Z. And when Generation Z are coming out of universities and they've had their first job and they're looking for that first real step and real change in their careers, they're going to be stepping this up at a whole other level. Generation X um, were, were great at embracing technology. The millennials You've got to think of things like the gig economy is this term, the Uber for everything. Well, Generation Z are going to be demanding even more than that. Connectivity, real-time engagement, real fulfillment and job satisfaction will be their driving elements. They're not going to be content with being sat in a back office function, simply copying data across from one screen to another or from a piece of paper into an ERP or whatever it may be. They're going to be looking for far more from their job roles and they're going to be wanting to be far more engaged with their uh, employer and with their colleagues around their business and with the other organizations that they're engaging with from an accounts payable finance, think suppliers and think if that relationship that happens there that's external to has a far wider impact when you take into consideration things like prompt payment terms, etc. So if we take the technology element of this, and we're just looking at that for a moment here, the, the news that's been going on for, for the last probably 18 months to two years has been about how RPA, uh, those kind of technologies are going to have such a big impact in, in our work uh, and in our lives 
and, and and actually that there's this real fear that the direct result of that is that people won't have an involvement in that from our perspective we would say actually the reality is probably quite different to that and that anything of that nature is probably a long way ahead of us yet however those tools do have a place and the places in reducing those mundane and routine tasks that a lot of us take for granted copying paperwork uh, shuffling papers etc etc they're things that we shouldn't need to have to do they are activities and tasks that fill time and fill days but could be very easily automated and in fact there's a lot of precedents now looking at this and saying actually look at your current job think about what your day-to-day -day tasks actually uh, rotate around now think could any of that be automated now the chances are if you look at your job role you look at your day-to-day -day routine but you also look at that of your team members, the guys that are there who are on the, the front lines, if you want. If 50% of their current role could be automated, it is going to happen in the coming years. That is the way that we're looking at this. So that then begs the question is, okay, so how do people get involved in this? And for the next generations coming through, that becomes really, really important because the job itself fundamentally changes. If you remove the repetitive routine tasks that often fill a lot of our time up. So I'd like to hand back to Rory, I believe you've got the next of our poll questions. Yes, uh, so I'm just going to launch this up now so you guys can get involved already. So whilst I'm asking the question, uh, you can answer. If you or your business has already invested in applications, has this given real-term benefits to the team? So the, the selection we've got here to answer from is there's been no investment to date. You've had no return on any investment. Uh, you've had a minimal real term benefits or yes, you've had real term benefits from, from your investments and applications. So I give you a couple more seconds to answer. Okay, so I'm just going to close the poll now and just share the, the results with you guys. So it looks like it is pretty close with uh, the two sort of positive answers, which is nice. Um, so yes, you've, you've seen real-term benefits. Uh, yes, there's been some minimal real-term benefits. Um, and 25% of people have answered and said uh, there's been no investment to date. So back over to you, John. Thank you very much, Rory. So having a look at those answers there. So thank you very much for, for getting involved in that, uh, guys. Much appreciated. Uh, the reason we asked that question is uh, there's been a survey that was released at the back end of last year by Goldsmith University, and they had engaged with a very large number of enterprise scale organizations. And what they were looking at is they were trying to find out whether businesses that had invested in uh, solutions and applications to remove repetitive and mundane tasks and actually genuinely found a, a benefit from that. Now the results of that survey, they're on the screen for you now, 80% uh, of those that were using an artificial intelligence based application and virtually 80% of organisations that were using RPA have said that it freed up employee time from the most repetitive tasks. Now, the poll that we just conducted there obviously a much smaller subset and a much smaller uh, example. But again, for those of you who have invested, there has been uh, a genuine return in that your employees no longer have as many repetitive based roles and tasks to complete and that their time has been freed up to actually be focused on far uh, more beneficial tasks within the organisation. On the screens now for you guys is uh, the results of a survey that was run, or, or a portion of the results of the survey that was run by PPM, uh, again in 2018. And PPM were asking organisations uh, the percentage of their, their supplier invoices that were still manually processed versus those that weren't. Now the result of that survey came back showing that more than 16% of the organisations or the respondents to the survey stated that they processed at least not more than 50% of their supplier invoices manually. This 
particular number is surprising when we take into consideration the fact that technology has evolved drastically in the last two to three years with the advent of the cloud and the cloud having effectively lowered the bar for what an organization needs to be doing in order to, to have been able to get a benefit from automation solutions and to deliver that benefit back out to their staff and to free their staff up so that they're not carrying out those, those mundane tasks. Before I just have a quick move on, and, and we're going to move on and have a quick look at, at some of the benefits of SaaS technology and why that's of, of importance to an organization, we do just want to ask you guys, uh, again, just for your input here, um, so Roy, over to yourself to launch. Thanks, John. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to launch this poll up. The question that we're asking now is, do you feel removing the most mundane and repetitive tasks is worth a real investment? So you could say yes, no, or unsure. I'm just going to give you uh, 10 seconds now. Um, should be fairly reasonably easy to answer. A couple more seconds, just so everybody has a chance. Okay, so I'm going to close that and share the results again. So, overwhelming majority saying yes, it is worth uh, removing the most mundane and repetitive tasks. Back to you, John. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And guys, uh, really, really glad to see all of you that answered that. None of you selected no, um, because that probably would have made me cry a little bit. Uh, so thank you on that one. As I said, the reason I wanted to just come out for yourselves in the audience before we moved on with this one is we're going to be taking a look at where uh, the benefits of uh, the newest technology are actually really coming to play and what that's going to be doing in terms of freeing up some time for people. So. Each year, uh, Cisco uh, compile a, a forecast almost of what they anticipate to be the big movers and shakers for the, the coming years ahead. They're not alone in this. Uh, obviously, Gartner do very similar, as do a number of other organizations. The Cisco forecasts from 2018, though, uh, were focused quite heavily on as a service technologies or, or SaaS software. The results of that were that they forecast that 86% of organizations, and this is globally, will be running purely on SaaS applications by 2022. And that is only a couple of years away. So it sounds like quite a bold statement to have made by Cisco. However, they do go on to, to explain why that is. They highlighted five key areas where SaaS brings real genuine benefit to uh, organizations that, that move into as a service uh, applications. The five points on the screens in front of you, what I've done is I've highlighted in yellow though, the key words from this that actually quite nicely fit into this narrative of moving from on-premise software solutions to cloud software solutions. And, and actually, these were also some of the reasons that people traditionally struggled to justify the investment in this technology for their organization. The operational costs were often too high, particularly for SMEs. Setup costs and times can be prohibitive to organizations that weren't handling large volumes of, of information uh, and documents. Very often, if the teams were decentralized, organizations felt that they would have to centralize their departments before they could then implement these technologies. There was a perceived burden on upgrades and maintenance costs that would come with, with on-premise solutions. And finally, there was a, a feeling that, that often data wasn't as accessible as, as they would like it. Now, Cisco highlight these five, and they've actually reversed these, and are saying, particularly on the final one, that having solutions in the cloud facilitates access to previously inaccessible data. And why is this important? And why have we, we, we mentioned this one again here? And uh, I can see in the chat box, somebody's just asked is, is, what will I be doing instead if I'm not manually processing? Well, one of those things is actually, what do you do with this data and how do you handle this data? And there's two areas behind this. One of them is the, the, the rise in the job role of the data scientist, people who are meant to be able to look at and understand and analyze the data to generate real business benefit. So that is an area that people will be likely to move across into, particularly in the finance function, to generate real benefit. The other 
side of this though is that data is integral to driving the benefits of new technologies that are coming through today and by that we are talking about things like artificial intelligence now before we move on to looking at these other technologies and the benefits that these bring in again what impact this is going to have on the day-to-day -day work of, of your of your teams there again we'd like to ask you guys another quick poll question so rory over to you Thanks, John. Uh, yep, so another poll question popping it up on your screens now. Uh, has your organization explored or invested in software as a service application? Um, so applications that are um, mainly held in the cloud um, and available to log in uh, remotely as, as well as within your business. So I'll just give another couple of seconds that everybody's had a vote. Okay, seems like the majority of people have voted now, so I'm just going to share these results. So it's a 50-50, uh, yes, so it looks like uh, everyone's organization has uh, explored software as a service applications, um, some not in, the, in, in your department, some in your department. So back to you, John. Wonderful. Thank you very much, everybody, for getting involved. And, uh, and again, brilliant to see that, that, uh, that everybody that's joined us so far today, uh, their organisations are already uh, investing in, in exploring this technology in, in, in some form. The, so, uh, again, we were alluding to data and the importance of data and, and how you access that, uh, the benefits of SaaS to that, and the fact that you guys, uh, the organisations you work for, are already exploring the, the benefits of this technology. And I alluded to the fact that data is vital to genuine gaining benefit from the newest technologies that are that are, that are coming into the marketplace and that are impacting on organisations in many, many departments. And one of those being artificial intelligence. Without data, without good quality data, without high volumes of data, you cannot generate a real benefit or even really get a, a huge benefit from artificial intelligence. The uh, the quotation on the screen for you guys now, uh, this comes from uh, some research papers by Ford. Uh, these were released right at the end of last year, and what Forbes has done is they had a look at the, the overall investment into artificial intelligence. Now, in order to get the facts right, bear with me here. So, the, the, the results of their analytics, the Forbes analytics, showed that in 2018 in the UK alone, venture capitalists have pushed 47% more investment into AI companies and AI technologies than they had been doing in the preceding year. Why Forbes have highlighted that? They believe that that level of investment in this technology and in the organizations that deliver these solutions will mean that rather than AI being simply on the hype, uh, on the hype train, on the hype cycle, it actually become a deliverable, measurable benefit for organizations. Now, hopefully, this time when we try and move the screen, we're not going to get stuck again. Let's check. Fantastic. We are back up and running here. I was a little concerned we may have got stuck again there, uh, ladies and gents. Um, so why, again, is this important? Well, if we've got data and we've got machines that can make use of that data to try and drive some benefits, We've already touched on the fact that it still needs to be people who are able to look at and understand that data and those results in order to generate real benefits of an organization. Now, interestingly, on this one, Deloitte uh, have researched the, the analytics elements of, of various departments in an organization. And finance as a department actually came out head and shoulders above uh, any of the other departments in most enterprise organizations have been perceived as the department that would most likely be found to use and invest in analytical tools. And actually 79% of the organizations polled came back highlighting the finance team and the finance function is the one that's most likely to do that. Now again, how do you get benefit from analytics if you haven't got good quality data and high volume data going into the platform? that allows you to actually drill into it and understand it. And more importantly, if you haven't got anybody there who's able to spend the time and invest the time in doing that, and you haven't got anybody who wants to do that. Understanding the current and past performance of predicting your future performances to make smarter decisions 
is a really integral part of an organization, particularly from the finance function, if that organization genuinely is looking at rapid growth or, or even slow growth. But it, why it's more important is this is one of those areas where for millennials and for Generation Z employees that are coming into the organization, this is an area where they will be able to be involved and feel that there is a genuine benefit to not only what they're doing day to day, but also in how they're engaging with suppliers, so supplier relationship management, how they're getting benefit for yourselves as a business, but also for the wider communities, those organizations that you're dealing with and working with, or even the community within your own organization, and how you engage and you have those relationships with your procurement departments, with your sales team, with your manufacturing floor, whatever other elements that may be. If we just look at the supplier side of this one, if we just look at the fact that with good quality data and with people having the time to genuinely look at the results of what's happening and analyze the output of that data, in some countries, and at the moment USA and Germany are, are miles ahead of the, the rest of us on this, but a lot of the analytical uh, benefit is being drawn as a result of then engaging with suppliers and negotiating early payment settlements, uh, discounts on, on settlements of invoices. And in fact, in both of those countries, the engagement with suppliers has generally revealed that if you were able to offer payment terms of less than 10 days to suppliers, suppliers would very often be willing to offer you a up to a 1% uh, cost saving on that invoice. Now, as you can see there, that could weigh up to an annual return of 18% which absolutely smashes anything you're going to get from a, a bank investment where you're just going to get your little bit of interest uh, paid on your, your bank statement. So it's a phenomenally important part. And again, for, for the younger generations coming through, if their job role is to go out and to save their organization money to ensure that the vendors and suppliers are being paid promptly and on time to be able to negotiate um, these kind of returns, that is a very different job role for your accounts payable clerk than somebody who is being recruited and employed to spend four out of five days manually processing data or copying information across from one system into another system. Even for those of us that are Generation X, we like to think that we're able to bring real benefits. We like to think that we're able to make an impact on our organizations that we're able to lead people and we're able to lead our organizations forward for the next generations. This becomes so much more important. And as I say there, guys, the workforce of today is motivated by opportunities to develop and possess a real sense of purpose with regard to their work. And before we go any further, I'd just like you all just to spend a moment here and think about your team. Think about those people that have sat there with your accounts payable in your finance department. And I'd like you to think about who in that organization, who in that department are the people that are most keen to take on new challenges? The ones that most often uh, are asking for further training, who want to be involved in understanding the relationship with the suppliers, who want to be sent on training courses, who want to take on more. From my side and from my perspective, when I just look at my team here from a marketing perspective in the UK, without a shadow of a doubt, the generation below me are the generation that genuinely push hardest for this kind of thing. They are the ones who want the training courses, they want the understanding, they want to explore, they want to be looking at more technology. Uh, in response to the question, will I get paid more? Who knows? That's a, that's a very open-ended question. I think that's probably more to do with your organization. But hey, if you're in a position where you have just created genuine real-term financial benefit for your organization, then I would suggest that you're probably in a position where you should be sitting down with your management and saying, guys, I've just made you X, X amount of money. Where's my cut? Where's my pay rise? Where's my benefit? And where's the benefit for my team as well? Why should we continue pushing this? Because hey, if you then go out to the market and you're looking for your next job role and you can say, yeah, we implemented this technology, we saved our organization this much money, um, we increased revenue by this much, that's a really compelling, powerful position to put yourself into. 
So over to you all for any questions. There, there were a couple of bits there that came up during the course of the webinar uh, that I have um, tried to uh, to handle going through. But has anybody else got any other questions they'd like to, to ask us here to today? Please do feel free. Pop them into the chat box if you have. Of course, no, no questions from any of you means that we have done a phenomenal explaining why you wanted to look at this subject matter and that you've all gone away and you're all fired up and, uh, and that we're all going to hear from you guys in, in our next webinar when you join us that actually know you have. You've gone away and you are now investing in SaaS-based technologies in your department and you're getting some real benefits. Okay, we have. How do we get started? Okay, so... Right, okay. Get started, get along. I mean, every organization out there now, we know that you guys do your research before you speak to any vendors. Now, they can sit here and say, come and talk to us and really explain how to get started. But we are only one vendor on the market. And what's really important for you as organizations is that you go and you do your research. Find out what people are saying about these technologies. Understand what the various solutions can actually offer you. Is what's important to you a capture solution? Is what's important to you uh, an SRM? Actually, you need to take a step back and, and really reevaluate re even what the function, the accounts payable finance function is doing. What have you already invested in? Talk to your IT teams. Find out about the SaaS applications that have already uh, that have already been invested in and find out are these just for one particular department? Are these things that can be rolled across many? Is this an application that could work for procurement and for finance? And of course, I would be remiss if I did say, don't then come and speak to us, pick up the phone, give us a call, drop us an email, uh, pop a, a question on, on one of our web forms. Uh, of course, we'd be delighted to have a conversation with you, uh, even if that's just to understand a little bit more about the technologies that are out there and what they can do for you as organizations uh, rather than anything else. Okay, what's the biggest barrier in regards to implementing RPA or AI? Daniel, thanks very much. Um, our, our understanding is certainly all of the research that we've seen from, from the big bodies, the partners, the Forbes, et cetera, the biggest single barrier is the people in the organization and it's changing the way that people think about this technology and it's changing the way that people feel about that what we've just shown here this morning is that demographic is going to fundamentally change in the coming two years or so what you will have instead of having generation x's and baby boomers who are heavily involved and embedded in the organizational structure who are heavily involved in the day-to-day -day workload of the organization which is what we see today you are going to find that the majority of the employees, at least a third of those, are going to be coming in and they're going to be far more technologically savvy. They're going to be far more willing to engage in new technologies and new solutions if they can see that there's a real benefit to the organization and to them for their work and their work-life balance. And I think that what we will see as a result of that is rather than it being a cultural issue within an organization, we will either find that that problem, those barriers, will fall away completely. We may find that actually it becomes a management issue, and that higher in the food chain uh, are still struggling to, be able to to justify an investment in in new technologies and solutions. Uh, David uh, is Microsoft involved in receivables. Uh, we partner with, uh, with an organization on that side of things. Uh, very happy to have a conversation with you on that one. I can ask one of the team to uh, to drop you a quick line over after the webinar, get them to pop you a quick email over uh, and have a chat with you on that one. Uh, we're on the, uh, the, the payable side of it. We have a very good partnership relationship with an organization on the receivable side as well. And we'll be sure to, to come back to you on that one and give you those details. Any more questions here, guys? Sorry if uh, I'm not looking straight at you guys. I'm actually looking at the chat log on uh, on another screen just off to my right.
right if nobody else has got anything else at this point in time I'd just like to say thank you very much before I hand over to Rory just to, to wrap up today. Um, do feel free to get in touch. Even when this webinar ends, feel free to drop us a line. It can be an email, it can be a telephone call, uh, it can be a message on one of our social media channels. We genuinely don't mind. Whatever is easiest for you to get in touch and do ask us any other questions that may, may come along for you. So Rory, over to yourself. Thanks, John. Uh, yeah, so uh, again, thanks very much, guys, for, for joining us today. Um, if you wanted to learn a little bit more about uh, the information that we that John was talking about, uh, or find out any more information around um, what's been going on around uh, council level automation over the last sort of 12 to 14 months, um, we have a survey report on our website, uh, which is sort of the future of purchase to pay, which was done uh, through PPN as well. I'm just going to post some links into the chat box. Uh, one of them will be a link to download that document. Um, so that should have gone in there. So I've, I've put in some social links, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Uh, put in a link to download the slides. The, so John's slides from this webinar. Um, I've put in then our website and then these survey results. Um, yeah. and. Uh, Upon the end of this webinar, there's going to be a little exit survey. Uh, if you guys could just take uh, a couple of minutes, it should take to, to just answer the questions there, we'd be very grateful. So again, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we hope to speak to you guys soon. Cheers, guys. <laughs>